Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are almost finished doing all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that gives you trouble, if you wish to watch the solution to that problem, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From, two, from day 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain almost all the same problems and in most cases, in vast majority of the cases, appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are done doing all the problems from first edition. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately, the revised GRE books that I just showed you do not contain enough quantitative comparison questions for us to practice on. To get some extra practice, from day number 401, we begin solving problems out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 291. Please turn to it. Page number 291, the very last problem on the page, problem number 15. Problem number 15 is already on the blackboard. Problem number 15, when it appeared in the exam, fewer than one third, fewer than one third of the people who took the exam got that question right. More than two thirds of the people missed it. I'm going to read the problem to you verbatim, exactly as it appears in the exam, and then I'm going to get out of your way. I'll give you a few seconds to pause and unpause the video. I want you to solve the problem yourself, pause the video, solve the problem yourself. Once you have the solution, once you have done the work yourself, then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds. Do you understand? Here's what the problem goes. We are told that the length, length of a rectangular garden, length of a rectangular garden is increased by P percent. So we have a rectangular garden, we're going to increase the length of that garden by P percent. We are further told that its width is decreased by P percent. So we're going to increase the length by certain percentage and we're going to decrease its width by exactly the same percentage. We're going to increase its length by P percent and we're going to decrease its width by P percent, by same percentage. Here's what we're being asked to compare. The area of the new garden, area of the new garden if P happens to equal 10 versus the area of the new garden if P happens to be 20. I want you to pause the video at this point and do the problem yourself. Here we go. The simplest, easiest, quickest, the most economical way to solve this problem is to plug in numbers. Plug in numbers means here, here in this case, it's not an algebra problem, it's a geometry problem. So what do we mean by plug in numbers? Plugging in numbers here means make up your own rectangle, just make up a rectangle. Make up any rectangle, any rectangle at all and just follow the instructions. Now having said that, in theory, you could make up any rectangle. For example, for example, we could make up a rectangle that looks like this. We could make up a rectangle that looks like this. A 4 by 9, for example, that's a rectangle. You could do that, there is nothing wrong with it. Except these are not very smart numbers to plug in. These are not smart numbers because the calculation here is going to be hellish. This problem deals with percentages. When the problem, when a given question that is in front of you is dealing with percentages, the good number to plug in when you're dealing with a percentage problem is 100. Because it's very easy to figure out the percentages when you're dealing with 100. So instead of making it 4 by 9, that'll be damn silly. Let's make it, let's make it 100 by 1000. 100 by 1000. Now the calculation is going to be very simple. So let's get going. So here we're going to increase, here's our new garden, and we're going to increase, we're going to increase the, the length, we're going to increase the length by 10%. So here's our new garden here. Our length before was 1000, 10% of 1000 is 100, so it's going to be 1100. So this is going to be 1100, very simple, very straightforward. And we also told that we are to decrease the width. This, the width is decreased by the same percentage. So we have to decrease the width by 10%. 10% of 
the width before was 100. Let's put our rectangle, let's put our original rectangle here so we can see it. Instead of making it so crowded. The rectangle that we are starting out with. The rectangle that we are starting out with, the rectangle that is our point of reference, is simply 100 by 1000. Don't make it complicated. Just stick a zero at the end to make it a length. So instead of, instead of 100, we're going to decrease it by 10%, it becomes 90. Now let's do the same thing, I'm going to pick up a speed a little bit because I'm, I'm being too childish now. We're being too childish here. Same thing here, we're going to decrease the width now, we're going to decrease the width by 20%, so it becomes 80. And we're going to increase the length by 20%, 20% of 1000 is 200, so it becomes 1200. We're going to continue our work on the top here. So in column A, we have the area of this rectangle, which is going to be 90 times 1100. And in column B, we have the area of this guy, which is going to be 80 times 1200. Are you with me now? Don't blink. Don't blink. It's going to be over soon. It's going to be over in seconds. I see two zeros here. I see two zeros there. Let's divide both columns by 100. Let's divide both columns by 100. These two zeros drop out. I see 80 here, I see 90 here, let's divide both columns by 10. These throws are out. We end up with 9 times 11, which is 99, and here we have 8 times 12. 8 times 12, how much is 8 times 12? How the hell do I know? I know 10, I know 10 times 8, I know 10 times 8 is 80, so that's, that's 10, 8, and then 2 more 8 is 16. So it's 96, so this guy is 96, I have no room here to put it. This guy is 96, and 96 of course is less than 99, the answer is 8. 96 is less than 90, 99. The answer is A. Do you understand? Oh, I actually made it far too complicated. I want to redo it. I want to redo it on the bottom here. Uh, I, I can't believe, I can't believe I made it so complicated. Let's redo it, okay? I'm going to start the process one more. Uh, don't need to start the process one more time. Let's pick up from here. Okay, because I wasn't paying attention. I was being too cocky. See, that's what it is. If you're being too cocky, you begin to lose concentration and you begin to lose your edge. You can't do that in the exam. I'm not done yet. There is more that we can simplify here. I didn't like the fact, I didn't like the fact that I had to waste my time to figure out what, what is 12 times 8. I, 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 I hated that. Let's simplify it even more, shall we? I see a 9 here, I see a 12 here. I see a 12 here, I see a 9 here. There's a 12 here, there's a 9 here. Let's divide both columns by 3. 9 becomes 3. And 12 is going to become 4. So here we have 4 times 8, four times, uh, eight and here we have 3 times 11. Now that I can handle. Now that I can handle. This is 33, which is 32. 33, of course, is greater. The answer is A. This is much better. I, I feel much better now. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.